I'm pretty sure that you are quite familiar with the previous term and also activities. And I do believe that rather than using a small of or a pinch of something, using numbers in expressing the amount of a thing is the least ambiguous way. Agree? But now, how do we get those numbers? With me, Arsanti, be ready, prepare yourself, and prepare your notes because today we are going to learn about measurement. Let's start with the definition of measurement. So, measurement is an assignment of a number to a characteristic of an object using a calibrated equipment as the standard. Or we could also say that measurement, measurement is a comparison of an unknown quantity of physical phenomena with the standard unit. Now we got two important things. The first one is quantity and the second one is unit. What is quantity and what is unit? Quantity is a property that is being measured. And there are two kinds of quantity. The first one is base quantity or the fundamental quantity. Examples are mass, time, and temperature. Now, the second type of quantity is derived quantity, just like its name, derived. So, it is derived from the base quantities. For example, pressure, volume, and also speed. We are going to learn about this quantity after this, okay? Now, how about unit? So, unit is the standard measure of a quantity. We have heard about kilogram, second, or even meter. Now, let's see the example. So, I'm gonna give you 5 seconds to determine which one is the quantity, which one is the value or the numbers, and which one is the unit. Okay? Let's see. Irene's body height is 168 centimeters. Now I'll count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Now let's see the answer. Yep, body height is the quantity or the thing that is being measured. And then 168 is the value or the number of the measurement and last centimeter is the unit of the body height or iron you got it now we are going to learn the best quantity that is being mentioned before there are seven best quantity that is applied all over the world we call it as international system of units or the abbreviation is si now I have a table of base quantity, the unit, and also the equipment to measure the quantity. The first one is length, and the unit is meter. We could use ruler to measure the length. And we also have mass, the unit is kilogram, and we use balance to measure mass. Next, we have time, and the unit is second, and we use stopwatch. Now, next we have electric color, the unit is ampere. And the equipment is a meter. Next is temperature. The unit is Kelvin, and the equipment is of course thermometer. Next is amount of substance. The unit is small. We could use periodic table to see the molecular mass of the substance. And the last one is light intensity. The unit is candela, and we could use flux meter to measure the light intensity. For today, we are going to learn the three out of seven base quantity, which are length, mass, and time. Now you know that we have special equipment to measure a certain quantity, right? But before we are going to use the equipment, we need to consider several attitudes. The first one is calibrating. So basically, calibrating is a setting or correcting of a measuring device. We usually do it by adjusting it to match to a dependable known and unvarying measure. For example, we are going to calibrate a thermometer that we are going to use in our group work in the lab. So, when we are going to calibrate it, we can calibrate it 
to the thermometer that is usually used in the room temperature of the lab. The next thing to do when you are going to calibrate something is zeroing. Zeroing is when you are going to set a measurement into zero again or in zero value. For example, you are going to use the lens, but forget to put everything back to zero so that the measurement will start from zero. Next is parallax error. So parallax error is an error in reading an instrument due to the eye of the observer or our eye and pointer are not in line perpendicular to the plane of the scale. For example, we are going to measure the volume of water in a thicker glass. Remember that you need to put your eyes in line with the pointer in the maker glass because when your eyes is too low or too high, it will show different results. Remember that, okay? Okay, so now we are going to the first quantity that we are going to learn today. Length. So basically, length is a measurement of the distance. And the international unit of length is? Yep, meter. And as we know that meter is not the only unit that we can use to measure a length. We have several units to make us easier if you're going to mention a very big or even a very small number of the length measurement. Now I have the stair of the units. So this is the unit of length compression. We start with a kilometer and then hectometer, decameter, meter, decimeter, centimeter, and then millimeter. So how does it work? So every time you go one step downward, you need to times the value of the length by 10. And every time you go upstairs for one step, you need to divide it by 10. To make sure that you are understanding the unit of one's conversion, now let's try some exercise. So here I have 23.5 meter and I would like to convert it into millimeter. Now look up to the stair. Meter to millimeter, we are going to go downward for 3 steps. So we need to times the 23.5 with a thousand. Is 23,500 millimeter. Meanwhile, here I would like to convert from meter into hectometer. So, from meter to hectometer, we are going upstairs for two steps. So, we need to divide it by 100. And the answer is 79.5 hectometer. It's quite easy, right? Now I'd like to introduce you to the several equipment of measuring length. The first one is ruler. It must be very familiar for you, right? It's also easy to use the ruler. So there are several units that are shown in the ruler. There are millimeter, centimeter, and some also have inch. The next one is vernier caliper. So vernier caliper is usually used to measure a diameter. To see how it works, Let's check the video. The scales on Fermi caliper are the main scale and Fermi scale. First, you need to insert the object between the jaw, then see the reading on main scale before or on the zero pointer in the Fermi scale, and now look for the Fermi scale reading that is perpendicular to the main scale reading. So for the total reading, is that the main scale reading plus the Fermi scale reading and then times by the least count. For the least count for vernier caliper is 0.01, then sum it up, and the diameter is 2.37 cm. Back with me again. Now let's see what does it show in this vernier caliper. The scale is showing 1.1 cm, the vernier scale is showing 0.07 cm, so the total is 1.17 cm. Now the last equipment that I'm going to show you is micrometer screw. So micrometer screw is usually used to measure a thickness. Let's see the video to see how it works. So micrometer screw has two scales, which are the big scale and head scale. Now, insert the object between the gauge, and then see the biggest number that is shown in the big scale, 
and take a look at the hat scale reading that is perpendicular with the pitch scale and for the result is in millimeter now let's see what we got here same with this one you need to see the reading on the main scale on the timbre scale and you just need to sum it up we're going to learn about the quantity that measure how heavy a thing is can you guess yep mass so mass is a measurement of the amount of a matter of an object and the international unit of mass is kilogram one thing you need to know is that one kilogram is equal to the mass of one liter of water in four degrees Celsius. Here I'm going to use this layer again. So I start with kilogram and then continue to hectogram, decagram, gram, decigram, centigram, and the last one is milligram. The way it works is the same with the one that we use to measure length. So yeah. Every time you go down there for one step, you need to change the value by 10 and every time you go upward for one step, you need to divide it by 10. So, I would like to show you one equipment to measure a mass. This is called as 3 beam balance. As the name, so it has 3 beam. The 3 beam will show a different number. All you need to do is just sum from the bigger one to the smaller one. So let's see what we got here. So the biggest one is showing 100 grams, and then the middle one is showing 400, and the middle one is showing 40 grams, and the last one is 2 grams. So we just need to sum it, and the result is yep, 142 grams. It's quite easy, right? Here we come the last quantity that we're going to learn today. This is time. So basically, time is a measurement of a measurable period. And the international unit of time is? Yep, second. I have a fun fact. So there is a Newton star that can spin 600 times in a second. Wow, that's amazing, right? Here I have several examples of the unit of times. So we, so we are familiar with year, week, day, hour, minute, and sec. We can also convert from one unit to another unit. For example, one year is equal to 52 week, one week is equal to 7 day, one day is equal to 24 hour, one hour is equal to 60 minute, and one minute is equal to 60 second. Here, the equipment or the tools to measure time is stopwatch. So it's quite easy to read the stopwatch. The first number is usually show the minute. And then the second number is usually show the second. And representing millisecond or 1 over 100 seconds. So actually, we could do the measurement in two ways. The first one is single measurement and the second one is multiple measurement. And how about multiple measurement? It means that we are taking more than one data in doing a measurement. What things that we need to consider in doing a multiple measurement? The first one is accuracy and the second one is precision. So what are accuracy and precision? So accuracy is the closeness of measurement to the accepted or for value. When we're doing a multiple measurement, it means that we have several data of the measurement, right? So the result when you are doing a good accuracy or a high accuracy of measurement, your measurement will be close to the standard measurement or it will be close with the result or the data that is shown in that thing if it is available. And the next one is precision. So precision is the closeness of measurements to each other. So every time you do the measurement, your data will be similar every time you do the measurement. And data should have a high accuracy and also high precision. But how does it look like when the accuracy and precision is not in the same level? Now let's see this one. 
So for example, we are doing an art series, how a high accuracy and high precision look like. The arrow is close to each other, yet it is in the center of the circle, right? Next, this is when low accuracy and high precision measurement happen. The next one is a high accuracy but low precision. So we could see that the arrow is almost close to the center of the target, but it shows low precision because the arrow is not really close to each other. And the last one, okay, this one is a chaos one because it shows a low accuracy and low precision. As we see here that the arrow is not even close to the target and all of the arrow is not close to each other. You got it? So that's the thing that you need to consider in the multiform measurement. We start with the definition of measurement. Then we also learn about seven base quantity which are included in the international system of standard units. We also learn about calibration and the parallax error. We also learn about the definition, the units, the unit conversion, and the equipment in doing the measurement for three base quantity which are length, time, and mass. And last, we also learn about accuracy and precision in doing multiple measurements. To make sure that you got the ideas for today's learning, I have a small quiz for you. You could scan the QR code here. So that's all our lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the learning for today's class. Stay safe and keep healthy, okay? I'll see you next time. Bye!